are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Well, hello, Booktube. I'm Sean, the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with yet another iteration of the Alphabet Soup book tag. This one is W is for Writer. If you're new to the Alphabet Soup book tag, I created it some months ago, and I'm planning to do one eventually for every letter of the alphabet. I started with A is for Author, and then I did N is for Novella, and the last one I did was E is for what was E for? <laughs> e is for ending. This is W is for writer. Something that a new subscriber and a channel that I'm going to give a shout out to at the end of this video. Those guys were confused and probably others of you have been confused. So I'm going to state it at the outset in this video and all future videos that no... While this is the letter W, you don't have to find answers to all of these... 10 prompts that have a W surname or a W title. You don't. Not at all. There's a couple where I specifically ask you to, but otherwise don't limit yourself unnecessarily, okay? Without any further ado, let's get started. Number one, W is for writer. A writer you've met, a writer you know, or a writer you have seen in real life. The writer doesn't have to be famous, but ideally having had something published somewhere. And this is just like a, a chance to just share some anecdotes. I love Eric Carl Anderson's videos where he talks about awkward encounters with authors. I did my own. His are just a hoot. So they don't have to be awkward encounters. But um, the last writer that I encountered was when she came to Tokyo to do a lecture at the Canadian Embassy, and she has penned my favorite novel, Madeleine Tien, and my favorite novel of all time is her latest one, Do Not Say We Have Nothing. So Madeleine Tien came to Tokyo, and I, I did make a bit of a fool of myself, but no more than usual. I did kind of fangirl out, <laughs> so there's, there's a picture, if I can find it, I'll put it up here, and it was lovely, she was lovely. I used to follow her on Twitter, but she was smart and, and withdrew from that vile media. That vile medium? Vile media? I'm not sure. Number two, W is for War. The last great book you read about war, and or one you want to read, or why you don't read war books, fiction or non. I know some people just don't. The last really good uh, novel that I read about war was Haji Murat by Leo Tolstoy. I read it at the end of last year as a buddy read with Lukash of Totally Pretentious. Uh, Hadji Murat translated uh, from the Russian by Richard Povere and Larissa Volokonsky. I didn't love this, but I really, really liked it. And I have chosen it because it matches my blouse as much as anything. Um, this was really great. I, I didn't love the ending. It was a little bit too macho in places, but in other places it was an absolutely brilliant character-driven novella about the Chechen rebellion in the 19th century in that part of the Russian Empire. The parts of this that dragged and they didn't go on for very many pages just made me realize I don't want to read War and Peace, but the parts that I absolutely loved make me vow to get to Anna Karenina sooner rather than later. And one that I'm looking forward to reading is this Finnish novel, Unknown Soldiers by Vano Lina, translated from the Finnish by Liesel Yamaguchi. Do I know how to pronounce his name? Vino Lina. Vino Lina. I just double checked the pronunciation. It's Vino Lina. It's set in World War II, and that's all I need to know, but I'm going to get to it maybe even this year. Number three, W is for www.writer.com. A writer you recommend or want to read whose first and or last name starts with W. Bonus points for first and last name. I couldn't think of, I couldn't think of one at all. Certainly hadn't read anything by a first and last name beginning with W. But I am going to take this chance to... Rave once again about one of my very most favorite writers, Denton Welch, who was a gay British novelist who died in 1948, uh, very young. This is his first novel, 
In Youth is Pleasure, 1945, and this was his last novel that was he didn't quite finish. A Voice Through a Cloud. He was still working on it and was just pages away from the ending when he died in 1948. Both of them are uh, exquisite, and I have full reviews of them on my channel, which I will paste in below. The writer that I'm looking forward to trying is Yiri Weil, and he was a Czech Jewish writer and Holocaust survivor, and he came to my attention because of one of his most notable works, Mendelssohn is on the Roof, and I want to read that. I want to start with that, and uh, if I like it, carry on, but his life story is incredible. He was born in 1900 in what is now the Czech Republic and died in 1959 in Prague or Praha. Mendelssohn on the Roof was written the year of his death. I'm just finding that out as I check the Wikipedia page and translated by Marie Wynne in 1991. And I've heard good things about it. I see there is even a review by Michiko Kakotani in the New York Times. So I'm going to link that in the show notes as well. Number four, W is for Wait and See, a book writer or genre you're not ready to try or try again yet, and why. So I'm imagining a lot of you are going to talk about new releases that you're going to wait to hear more reviews or something, and I thought I would end up choosing that too. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that I am not sure that I will ever want to read one of Margaret Atwood's most popular novels, Oryx and Crake. I believe there's a series, maybe a trilogy, but Oryx and Crake was the first one, and it's kind of got an environmental theme. And I, even though I am an armchair supporter of environmentalism, I don't haven't so far gotten along with fiction about it. Published in 2003. The other thing is that it's speculative fiction. It's a, it's a bit kind of dystopian, so none of that works for me. But it's supposed to be one of her very best. I'm not especially waiting to hear other people review it or sell me on it, but that might happen. I'm just waiting to see if I might grow into it. And I think the odds are low. But it's always been in the back of my mind. I'm not ready yet. Number five, W is for what's the title? When I've done the title ones in previous iterations of the Alphabet Soup book tag, I've said... Find a book with a lot of, whatever that letter is, A's in it. But for this one, W's, I'm going to go easy on you. A book with at least two W's in the title. Bonus points for more than two. I went through my entire library of physical books, and I could only find a handful that had two W's. I had, you know, a handful with two, and the one I've chosen is John McGairn's memoir, All Will Be Well. I just recently acquired it, and I did that because John McGairn is almost like a character in a collection of literary autobiographical essays by the writer Ian Lee called Dear Friend, From My Life I Write to You in Your Life. And there's at least a full essay about him, and it made me want to read anything by him, but it, she talks quite a bit about his memoir as having been a crucial text for her as she recovered from... Uh, suicidal psychiatric emergency. Number six, W is, of course, for women. A great book you've recently read by a female. Well, I try to read almost exclusively female, so that was not too difficult, but it was difficult in choosing which one I was going to talk about. I chose one that I haven't done a full review on, so it gives me a chance to shout its praises, and that is Rowan Huseo Buchanan's second novel, Starling Days which I read at the end of last year and loved. Five-star read. I really liked her debut novel, Harmless Like You, and have been just waiting with bated breath for her second one, and I did enjoy it even more. It had a, an emotionally powerful ending, which brought it up to a five-star read. And it's about a young married couple that end up moving to London from New York, and the wife, Mina, she... This is not a spoiler. I, I don't know that it's on the synopsis, but it happens in the first chapter. We find out about it in the first chapter that she has um, mental health issues and she attempted suicide on their wedding night several years before, and she still struggles with her mental health. And so it's about their relationship and it's done with such sensitivity and achingly beautiful writing with a really emotionally devastating, powerful, 
uplifting conclusion that I cannot recommend it highly enough. Number seven, W is for word. One you encountered recently in your reading that was new to you and or your favorite words. So I'm going to do both. My word comes from Duck's Newbury Report, Lucy Elman's mammoth novel, which I didn't end up getting along with, so I bailed at page 100. But there certainly is. She's a very wordy writer, and I don't mean that necessarily as, a, as an insult. Um, I, this book is a darling of many well-read readers, and I enjoyed the first 60 pages, and by page 100 I was done. But she talks a lot about language and words and meaning and etymology and all that stuff. So she taught me on page 61. As you probably know, most of the book is one long sentence, about 95% of it is one long sentence. And instead of periods and capital letters, every new thought is introduced by the fact that blah, 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 blah. So the fact that nobody uses the word enormity right, and then just a few lines later, she comes back to it. The fact that people think it's got something to do with magnitude, enormousness, something humongous, bigly, but it's not that at all. The fact that it's a catastrophe, not largesse. The fact that I was trying to explain this to Ben when Stacy piped up and said I was talking down to him, but I didn't mean to. So I don't know that I consciously knew that, but I think unconsciously I did, because it makes sense. And I've checked it in the dictionaries, and yes, enormity means a big disaster, a, a humongous catastrophe. It doesn't mean anything humongous or extremely large. It's always negative. It's just baked into the meaning of the words. My favorite word is calipigian. Here it is. I'll let you look it up. And uh, if you know of anyone, please send me a DM. Number eight, W is for weary, a theme, plot twist, and or cliche you're getting damn tired of. So for me, it's about breakups, romantic or marital. As the sole plot of a novel, I just am not interested in a piece of fiction that centers on the breakup of a marriage or of a relationship. I don't mind reading about it if there's other things going on and it's not the theme of the novel. And I don't mean to say that there aren't excellent examples of it where, you know, somebody leaves an abusive relationship or for feminist reasons or it's echoing grander themes. No problem. But I bailed on a, I believe it was an Italian novel. It was from Europa Editions. It's the only Europa Editions that I hated. What was it called? Entwined? Entwined? Anyway, if I th remember it, I'll put it up here. But it's it, it, we don't need the book title and author to tell the story that... In the opening chapter, and it's been a few years, so my memory is that in the opening chapter, the couple splits up, and then the novel in chapter two goes back to the beginning of the relationship to trace the history of their marriage that ended in failure, and I just thought, you know what? I would rather stick pins in my eyes. So that plot is getting very old for me. Number nine, W is for whippersnapper. A writer who writes or wrote shockingly well at such a young age. And I have chosen uh, the author of one of my other very most favorite novels, Anthony Mara, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena, was his debut novel. And I didn't consciously know until I was trying to figure out what my answer for this prompt would be after I created the prompt. Anthony Mara was only 28 when this novel was published. His debut novel, it's the second best novel I've read in my entire life. And he is just a freaking literary genius. So kudos to the 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 youngun, the whippersnapper, Anthony Mara, 28. My God. This is the last prompt other than tagging. So number 10, W is for Weakest Link. A book in a series or in a favorite author's oeuvre that wasn't nearly as good as all the others. And I talk about Barbara Pym enough, so I won't go down that rabbit hole. Instead, I'm going to talk about another writer near and dear to my heart, and that's Miriam Taves, the author of my top read of 2018, Women Talking. Her novel just before this one, second to last novel, All My Puny Sorrows, just gutted me. But 
about a dozen years ago, around the time it was published, I read and was less than wowed by A Complicated Kindness. I know others who've read it more recently and loved it. Maybe I would love it now, but I remember how pleasantly surprised I was by how amazing All My Puny Sorrows was, because I was a bit underwhelmed by A Complicated Kindness. Certainly A Complicated Kindness... Let's see, how long ago was it? A Complicated Kindness was published in 2004, and I believe I read it around the time it was published. All My Puny Sorrows, 2014, so 10 years later. Boy, just an amazing amount of literary growth. And Women Talking, 2018. I will go back and try it someday, but I want to read more of her backlist before I go back and try A Complicated Kindness again. But uh, to me, that was the weakest link. And that's it, except for number 11. W is for whosoever. Tag wantonly. So as I have said in my previous three Alphabet Soup tag vid original videos, I'm trying to get us all away from this business of needing to be tagged or tagging people. So the, the first thing to say is, if I've tagged you before on any of the other three, you are automatically tagged to do this one and any of the ones that come down the pipe, okay? I'm only gonna tag anybody once. Also, if I've never tagged you, if I don't know you, or I, for whatever reason, have not ever mentioned you as being tagged, you are still tagged. This is an open tag. And the exception that I make is, uh, I do like to shout out new to me booktubers or booktubers that for whatever reason I just didn't tag previously. And I have now going to make an exception for the Grand Duke of Booktube, Steve Donahue, because he doesn't seem to ever do a tag unless he's tagged on it. So, Steve, you're tagged. And Amy at Zoe Beck, not a new-to-me Booktuber, but uh, she's a great Booktuber, and I don't think I've ever tagged her on one of these. Uh, and then Liz Schubert, who has come back after a long break. Welcome back. And then the rest of these are booktubers that are new to me since I did my last Alphabet Soup book tag. The Code X Cantina, Brian from Book Wanting, Roz at Scally Dandling in the Books. Oh my god, what a channel title that is. Uh, her daughter, Tilly at Tilly Shelf, Jenny Johnston, Alan Braswell, Samuel's Book Reviews, and Stella at 30 Books, and you! All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.